They look at me and see only the mask. The Azakana have spread like a plague since the Noxian invasion. My work never ends. Before, I chased a wayward gale. Now I hunt a storm of darkness. Where does the mask end and I begin? Hey guys, welcome back. We are playing Yone today, a late game hyper carry and also one of my favorite champs. Um, he has a very weak early game guys, so your only goal is to get the minions you can. If you can't, then you just stay back and uh, get the XP. You want to at least get your tier 2 boots and if possible also the shield bow and that's when you start doing stuff. So most of the time you just want to let the opponent push the wave towards you because if they do that then there is no way to gank you whatsoever and you can also just farm on their tower. So that is the safest, safest possible way for you to play out the lane. That's it for Q guys and then when you get that third Q you can use that to maybe hit the opponent but you can also use that to hit low HP minions that are out of range and same goes for your W. Just let the opponent push, they are gonna last hit, get all the minions you can, you want to really, if possible your first base you want to do that when you have enough gold for the tier 2 boots. And we are focusing so much on attack speed because your abilities, your W and your Q scales with attack speed. And that means that the cooldown of those abilities will be lowered when you get more attack speed and also the cast time. So it can be very awkward using that Q and W early game when you don't have any attack speed but that's gonna get a lot better as soon as you get all the attack speed that you need. And before you go in with that E guys, try to stack up your Q if possible so you have that third Q ready, uh, the knock up. Because if you hit somebody with it they'll be CC'd for a short duration and then you get a bit of extra time where you can damage them so you get the maximum amount of damage out um, as possible. Also remember that the first part of your E you can use that dash to get past um, walls. Um, for example from the red buff to the dragon pit that side you can also do it here in the mid lane and towards the raptor camp as well. So there are lots of thin walls that you can use that E over. Um, Helps a lot with the mobility if you want to chase somebody down, then that's really good to know. And the second part of your E is a cleanse. That's also very, very important to know. Um, you have to time it though, um, because you have to recast your E when you want to use it as a cleanse because you become unstoppable. So you can use that to cancel out DC build as well. For example, the Lee Sense Ultimate, you can cancel that out. You still receive the damage, but you will not get knocked back. So we have enough gold for the Berserkers, uh, thanks to that Nuno Gang, so that's absolutely perfect. Always get this as your first item. We got a perfect base off. So if you're playing against a hard matchup guys, you know AD Assassins. Oriana can also be very difficult early on because she can harass you really hard, but if you play against a high counter pick, then you can go for Doran's Shield and then you can also go Fleet Footwork into Result Tree for double sustain runes. That's like the safest way you can play Yone. You're gonna lose a little bit of damage when you go for, or actually a lot of damage, but you also still have a lot of damage because um, Yone scales insanely well, so you're still gonna scale even if you don't have Conqueror. I remember that when the target is within kill range of your E, then that um, mark will be split in half, um, so you can use that as an indicator to know when you can E out. But keep in mind that somebody, some people will intentionally try to bait out the second part of your E by healing or using some kind of shield 
at the very last second and then they won't get executed by that D. So that's something you should keep in mind, but otherwise always look at that E mark and know exactly when it will execute people. And that is when it breaks in half and turns um, that black color. You can get that Vamp Scepter if you don't have anything better to buy. It gives you a lot of sustain, so that's also good into tough lanes. But if I had a bit more gold, then I would have bought the most expensive component so we can use as much gold as possible and get that core item much, much faster. In the trades, always try to stack up the... Or most of the time, you can try to stack up that third Q and then you can go in. But in high elo... People are just gonna back off when they see that you have that third Q up. So what you can do is that you use one Q on the minions. And then you just straight up E into the opponent, hit them with a the second Q and then the next Q will be the knock up. So that's a way of surprising them so they don't uh, just randomly back off. And your ultimate as well. Also gives you that unstoppable mechanic. But it's not quite like your E. Um, for example, if Skana use your ultimate, uses his ultimate the same time you use yours, your ultimate will still go through no matter what. But as soon as your ultimate finishes guys, then you just get dragged straight back to Skana. So you can still be displaced and stuff, but the ultimate will go through no matter what. That's basically how it works. So that's also really, really important to know. And if you hit an enemy champion, then you're gonna cancel the dash and end up straight, straight behind them. So you can use it to escape with, but if somebody body blocks you, then you're gonna stop right next to them. So it is not that effective for escaping unless you're playing against someone who's um, immobile. And you don't always have to use that ultimate with your E. That is something a lot of low elo players are doing all the time for some reason. Uh, that is not something you had to do. You can do it in a team fight because you just want to burst people as fast as possible and then you want to get back to safety. But if you want to stay in the fight in an extended fight, then you can use that ultimate before you use anything else. So you can use it as a gap closer. Your E cooldown is pretty high in the early stages, so you can really keep going for those plays you have to wait it out. Um, because that's like the main tool for you to get straight on top of the opponent. I actually miscalculate right here, um, so he would have died if I hit that third knock up, or third Q knock up, but I missed that for some reason, so. He survived with like 1 HP. You don't use any mana on Yone guys, so um, important that if you don't have anything to do in the mid lane, um, let's say that you already pushed out your lane and you can't really kill your opponent, then you can just do the pushing and then you can head to the raptor camps. It doesn't matter if it's your allies or your opponent. You really want to make sure that you are taking as much gold for yourself as possible because this is Jone. It is a late game scaling hyper carry. So the faster you get yourself all of that gold, the faster you're going to scale and then you can just destroy people because all you need Berserkers, Silbo and Infinity Edge and then you can 1v9 the game. So make sure to farm at all times. You will not get kills all the time. That's not how it's going to work in all of your games. Some games you're going to snowball insanely hard. Other games you might farm well, but you don't have any kills in the other game. And that's why it's really important that you just keep your CS numbers high because that is the most consistent way of um, getting gold for yourself. Adjust the end right here, so make sure that we do not lose the cannon minion. Um, 
Sometimes I do end up missing those because I focus too much on getting the kills, so that's also something you can work on if it's the same case for you. We have the shield bow. And this is just a mythic item you want to get every single game. You do not need the Kraken Slayer, you also don't need the Gale Force. Shield bow is the best mythic item on Yone every single game, no matter who you are playing against. So there is absolutely no reason to get anything else. This mythic item gives you everything you need because Yone is squishy guys, so you get that shield, which helps a ton against burst damage. You also get lifesteal, that's also really really important for the landing phase, so you can sustain and don't have to base all the time when you get poked down. So that was a really nice double kill, um, they are committing really hard to get that kill on me, so that did not go very well for them. Um, so yeah, your ultimate is a skill shot, so it can be pretty easy to dodge for the opponent, so that's why a lot of the times you can combine the third Q into the ult. But make sure that you are a little bit out of range when you use that third Q, so when you start the dash with the third Q, that's when you get within range, because then you're gonna maximize the CC time. And also minimize the cast time, so before they actually hit the ground, then your ultimate will already go off, so they will get hit by your ultimate no matter what. They will not be able to dash away or flash away or anything. So third Q into the ultimate is a guaranteed way of hitting your ultimate. Good to do against mobile opponents or also fine to do against opponents you think that have some kind of movement or summon a spill up like flash. Objectives are also super important. You can also do them pretty easily once you get the shield bow. But you don't really want to solo that because the enemy jungle can always steal it away. In this case here, we were waiting for the Nuno, so I just started damaging it. And as you can see, I'm already pretty low HP. We're also sitting on a lot of gold. The next item should always be the Infinity Edge. I know some people like to go for the seal. And it's because people always want to try something new, but no matter what you do guys, this is always the best possible build path. Berserkers into Shilbo into the Infinity Edge. That is the absolute biggest power spike you can get. All that um, seal stuff is not better in any way. It's just for people who want to try to, you know, try different stuff, try to invent new builds and stuff, but no matter what they do, this will always be the best until they make some kind of balance change where it's not that good anymore. And this was the ultimate into the third queue. As you can see, I queued the Nautilus before I channeled that ultimate, and that is because I wanted to fully charge up that queue guys, so you ult somebody and then use the third Q after, that's also another way to change CC people, so you make sure that they can't flash away. That gives you a lot of extra time for you to burst them down. So that was a really nice triple kill. And that is something Yone can do, he's um, a lot like the Yasuo. You have really really high outplay potential and that's why these champions are so fun to play for so many people. But at the same time, they're also very difficult. Mainly because um, when you play against people who know how to abuse Yone's insanely awful early game, that's why it becomes really, really difficult to play these champs. It's always easy when you play against opponents who has absolutely no idea how to punish you, then of course it is going to be easy playing these champs, but the real difficult part is against the good players. 
But these champs are really good in low elo because they snowball so hard, they do not use mana, so you don't have to worry about the mana management. They have so much sustain that you don't really have to base. If you get to low HP levels, you can just hit the Raptors or the minion wave and they're gonna be back to full HP. So this is the biggest early game power spike. The three item power spike guys, you have the Berserker, Shield Bow and the Infinity Edge. This is all you are playing for guys. You get this then you're just gonna destroy people. You can just wipe people out easily and they will not be able to do anything at all. Because you deal hybrid damage, you have a lot of magic damage in your kit as well, as well as physical damage. So it's also hard to itemize against you. So even if they only build armor, then you're still gonna deal a lot of damage compared to a lot of, a lot of other AD champions who get countered by armor. This is what I meant with people baiting out your E. Because even though that cross get caught in half and it shows that um, the target will get executed, they can always heal themselves, seal them or something and then they're gonna survive. So keep that in mind because people will be trying to bait that out, especially if they know how your um, E works. So now that you have so much damage, you actually don't need any more damage at this stage. So now most of the time I'm actually just going for the Guardian Angel because that allows you to play even more aggressive and you're also getting some damage from it because you get the B of Sword. You get a lot of damage and you also get a lot of safety that allows you to play even more aggressive and you can go even more ham. So this is something you can go for pretty much in all of your games unless they have like 4 or 5 AP champs then obviously you don't want armor then you can just go for magic resistance you can go for the spirit visage or you can also go for witsend if you want to. Which send is really OP right now, so it is getting nerfed next patch, so it's going to be a situational item instead of an item that you can build every single game on these um, hyper carries like the Wayne, Wayne and the um, Kogmo and such. So that was like the one of the absolute best ways you can use your entire kit guys. This is what Yone is all about. You try to group people up, hit all of them with a knockoff from your Q and then you follow up with that ultimate. You keep them CC'd for so long while also bursting them down and if you manage to do this then that's a guaranteed one fight. But you have to find the angle because if you go in from the front then people will expect it and then they will just CC you down. If you get CC down guys then you're just gonna die instantly because you are so squishy. That's why it helps a lot having the shield bow and also the guardian angel. Um, that really is gonna help you out a lot. But that was pretty much how you wanted to play the team fights. You're like an assassin, you're like a hyper carry, but you also play like an assassin where you want to access the backline. You want to use your abilities on the backline, you can still hit the front line, you know, kite back and such, like a normal AD carry will, but your main goal is to access the backline, and you have a lot of different tools to do that. You have that ultimate, the best one, you also have double gag closers on your E and the Q. You do have multiple ways of accessing the backline and that is what you should be focused on doing. You can also extend the timer on your E with your ultimate that is going to give you a few extra seconds and then you will be recalled back to that main body. Israel is one of the more annoying AD carries you can play against because he's gonna build tanky, he already has the frozen heart and he also has the um, 
Armor boot, so he's gonna be very very tanky and super difficult for any AD champion to take down. Um, so that's why at this point, if they have a tanky team while also having Ezreal, then you can go for Lord Dominix. That is the ultimate armor pin item for Yone. We got the Guardian Angel, we also have extra crit chance and that is because when you get more than 100% crit chance then that excess crit will be turned into bonus AD. So you can't overcap on crit and that's really good so you don't have to worry about the build so you can pretty much build any crit item that you want to. Ayone is very um, good at split pushing, but that's something you could be doing most of your games. Of course, if it is safe for you and you're not running it down in your game, then you can look to split push because that's gonna secure you the waves, the gold and XP, and most of the time you should be able to one versus one the opponent. So it is a champion that can pressure from the sidelines, but it is also a champion that can potentially do well in team fights. Depending on how good you are with that ultimate and aiming it properly, you know, hitting the right targets. But it does cover a pretty big distance, as you could see right here, we hit Israel over the wall. So you can also, you know, use the ultimate to get to the other side of the walls when you want to chase down people or when you want to escape maybe from like four or five people chasing you down. But unlike Yasuo, then this champion is better. Um, in team fights, it's easier to pull off because you have that safety mechanic on the second part of your E. So if something goes wrong, then you can always E out. Assuming that you went in with the first part of your E. That is not something you can do with Yasuo because the moment you ult in, then you are committing to the fight. So if people are stronger than you, then you're just gonna die straight up. That's not the case with Yone, it doesn't have to be because you have that E, second part of your E, so... If you're not able to do anything and you think that you're going to die, then you can just E out, back to safety, and then wait for another opportunity. Having that Guardian Angel really feels insanely nice because you can go for pretty much any play and know that you're gonna be just safe because you have that extra life and that's why I think this is the best item you can buy after the three core items. Um, Guardian Angel, so that's something you can do in every single game unless they have a full AP team because then armor is obviously useless even though you're gonna get that revive mechanic. Lord Dominix because they are building a lot of armor and they are pretty tanky. More tankier than a normal team because they also have Estrell. That's absolutely fine to build on Yone. He already has hybrid damage and max health damage on his W as well. With that armor pen we can amplify that damage, the physical part of his kit. So even if they are stacking full armor, then you will still be able to shred them to pieces. Most of the time you don't really have to buy the Lord Dominix, but you can do that if they have a tanky team like this where people are just stacking armor because we are pretty much full AD, right? Because Nunu doesn't really count as magic damage because he's just a tank, so people don't care about him. So we can just go ahead and end the game right here. It's a pretty fun game to play. Um, this is what happens when Yone is ahead. You're just gonna snowball out of control. But well, that was the Yone video. I hope this one was helpful guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next one.